Hi guys, it's Margaret from Bliss Farm and today I am introducing a new type of video that I'm going to be doing occasionally, um, maybe sometimes more often than others, but it's going to be called Coffee Confessionals and what that, what these videos will be about are um, things that are near and dear to me, either issues I'm having in my life, questions I have, uh, you know, that I might need, um, that I would want people's opinions about, or maybe, I don't know, maybe just, well, my opinion, my opinion on something um, about life, relationships, um, you know, it could even be something about the home. Um, because that is what Bliss Farm is mostly about. Um, however, it could be something about family, kids, um, men. <laughs> wow, that could be a lot of videos in itself. Um, <laughs> but anyway, it could. It's going to be about anything. And now, if you have any, um, you know, if you come up with any ideas that you'd like to me to do um, in lieu of this type of video, please leave a comment below. I'd be more than happy to entertain any ideas. And, um, yes, because it is coffee confessionals, I definitely have, whoops, um, a cup of coffee here. Um, I like to live dangerously. I have strictly decaf coffee. I've been on a 100% decaf kick now for, I believe, almost two years. Um, but I started drinking coffee in my teens. So, and back then there was, um... Uh, well, there wasn't half calf back then, and um, I drank it, although I didn't have mugs quite this large, <laughs> but I drank it, and not, not like, you know, all day long or anything, but I drank it, and um, then in my 20s, I went to, that's when half calf, I believe, was invented. I think, I want to say Hills Brothers. I don't even know if there's Hills Brothers coffee anymore, but I think they were the first ones to put out the half calf. And then um, I had that for a long time. And then a couple years ago, I went completely decaf. And I went completely decaf because of my anxiety. And that is the um, going to be the topic for today's coffee confessional. I'm going to take a big sip before I get started. Mm. Okay. So, what I'm going to be doing today is, um, like I said, it's going to be about anxiety. I'm going to tell you my story and how it's um, evolved through the years and where I'm at now. And um, I would love anyone that has anxiety or has dealt with it or has any type of symptoms that are anxiety, please, I, I would, you know, leave... Um, a comment below or you can um, uh, you can go to my blog and email me through my blog if you would like I mean if you you know if you need someone to talk to maybe you're not comfortable with leaving a comment um, I'm here for you because I um, I don't really have a lot of friends and um, I do have family but they're busy you know, <laughs> if you can hear, yeah, my, my voice is cracking. Um, I may have to stop this video a couple times. I don't know. I, I've been, today has been a bad day, um, in this department. So, um, <laughs> and I'm a crier anyway. <laughs> I'll admit it. I'm a crier. Um, so anyway, I started getting anxiety in my early 20s, um, yeah, it was after my daughter was born. I don't think I got him before that. Um, but it was after my daughter was born, and she was born. I was um, just turning, I was going to be 22 a month after she was born. And maybe a couple years after that or so is when I uh, experienced my first anxiety attack. And um, from there, you know, it, it wasn't really bad. But it was bad enough. I didn't know what the heck was going on. And um, I worked through it. You know, I uh, I just worked through it. And then occasionally I would get one. And then as I got to my 30s, 
Now, occasionally, but then there would be like long periods of time where I'd go without any. Um, so it wasn't a major issue. And then um, in my 30s, I would get them, oddly enough, whenever there were um, tornado warnings. I mean, literally, that, that would bring one on for me. I was just, well, I was living in a mobile home at the time. And, and I still am. Not the same one, but I'm still living in a mobile home. And that's the one thing I hated about them. There's no basement. And I think I just totally freaked out, you know, that I was going to be in this home with my kids and there was going to be a tornado. And that just brought brought it on. And um, then, uh, as time went on... Um, you know, that I knew that that would always bring one on. Well, but I still wasn't getting them, you know, all the time. Occasionally, I'd get a little anxious. I'd get a little, you know, I'd go through spurts maybe. I'd get them a little bit more often. And then in December of 2009, I had to um, abruptly move from the home I was living in due to um, financial reasons and problems with um, with the mobile home park I was living in. They were having their own financial issues. And the combination of those two things forced me to move out. Um, at least I felt that was just the best decision at the time. And um, unfortunately, it was, you know, right before the holidays, I did not want to move um, my kids didn't want to move. My daughter had moved back in. She had moved out and she had moved back in, uh, just a few months before this. And unfortunately she wasn't the most responsible and, you know, um, helpful person at the time. We ended up, you know, she wasn't going to be helping me with it or with anything. And it just... I mean, the combination of everything, um, once we moved out of there and I moved into the home that I'm presently living in, um, it was maybe spring of 2010, and I went to Myers, um, and I had one of the worst anxiety attacks that I had ever had. I freaked right out, and... Um, after that, I never went into a store. I have not been into a store by myself since then. Um, I've taken my son. You know, I'll go shopping with my mom or my daughter has gone with me. I just will not go by myself. Um, and initially, it was just stores. Um, then, around that same time... Um, loud noises I know this is going to sound crazy but I, I wish I, I knew why loud noises bring on um, anxiety for me trains um, sirens oh my god horrible um, and I can kind of see why we've had you know my daughter is was um, diagnosed as a type 1 diabetic when she was 13 and when she first was diagnosed she was a poster child for diabetes for you know kids with diabetes um, she wanted to do all her own shots she knew the diet inside and out she was just I, I was so proud of her and um, but you know that was at 13 well, you know, a few years down the road, she started slipping up a little bit. And at first, it was manageable. When she hit 17, she, you know, hit a bad patch. And um, she moved out. And she wanted to be on her own. And she landed in the hospital several times. And um, just one thing to the next. It just, you know. And then it culminated. We had to... Um, call for her to be taken to the hospital uh, right after we moved in here. 
So, <laughs> I can see how some of these things, you know, got me to the point that I'm at. Um, but, you would think that knowing that, I could manage it, and I can't. Um, my finances haven't gotten any better. Uh, there's just so many things, and no matter how hard I try, things just don't get better. Some things have even gotten worse, and it's just crazy. And with that, you know, combined, I just, my anxiety is just, um, you know, terrible. Um, I try to, um, you know, I've done a lot of research. Um, I've uh, looked at uh, ways like massage, acupuncture, or not, not, not acupuncture, pressure points, I think is what it was called. And when I feel one coming on, I'll, you know, do the pressure point if I start to even feel a little anxious because I can't wait very long. If I wait until I'm in a full-blown anxiety and there's just nothing's going to help me but, unfortunately, medication. Um, but I, uh, I have tried, you know, I, I'm trying to do many things to keep me... Um, relax to keep me stress free but if you're suffering you know and please if you are suffering don't um, don't blame yourself don't you know um, think that you're weak because it's a debilitating um, thing to have it you know when it grabs hold there's nothing you can do um, and sometimes, um, <coughs> excuse me, I have felt fine and maybe I'm just feeling tired or whatever, you know, maybe for whatever reason, I get one anyway. Um, it, it's, it's just, it's terrible. Terrible. Okay, sorry about that. Um, my camera died. <laughs> Just as I um, had a tickle in my throat, so I had everything going on there for a minute. But, um, as I was saying, anxiety is just a terrible thing to have. And, um, you know, I've suffered now over, well, really suffered badly for almost six years now. And, um, but, you know... Uh, my first experience was over 20 years ago. So, <coughs> excuse me, um, I am uh, very aware of how they feel and it's uh, not fun. And um, it's hard because, you know, it's, it's hard to tell someone that's never really experienced it um, that you can't do something because you're afraid of getting anxiety or you don't know what how you would handle it if you did get anxiety in that situation um, such as like being in a store by myself um, I don't even want to do want it to happen if I'm with somebody let alone if I was by myself um, and Sometimes it gets to the point where I just don't even want to drive. Um, I'm scared. I'm scared that one of the factors may, um, you know, come up if I see a bad accident, you know, the sirens. I don't know how my body is going to react. Uh, sometimes I could be okay. And other times I might not be. And, um... So that's, uh, you know, it's it's a bad situation. Um, I I don't know what else to say. Um, I, you know, I guess mainly I really um, want people to know that um, they're not alone, um, and it's not something that you should try to do alone. 
um, as much as, uh, you know, you may not want to tell people, um, it's best to tell, you know, it's best to, to get it out. Plus, the more stress you have on yourself, that's not going to help at all. Um, so you need to be honest and open up with people and, and let them know. And, um, you know, if they don't understand, well, they don't understand, but it's a very real thing. And so just, you know, keep working at making them understand. Um, and, uh, with that, uh, as, you know, as I said before, um, if you have experienced anxiety on any level, um, please share below. Or like I said, if you aren't comfortable sharing that way, um, contact me, you know, through, you know, I have a bunch of links there, my blog link, um, Twitter, um, you know, if you haven't just an Instagram, just, you know, send me a little, well, I don't know if you can do that on Instagram. Hmm. Well, I have a Twitter. <laughs> I have all the social media buttons there. Um, so, you know, you can get a hold of me and um, we can talk some other way if that is what you would like to do. Because I do know I'm very familiar and I know that the one biggest best thing is to have someone that understands. So, um, if nothing else, just know that I understand because I've been through it, I'm going through it, and, um, I hope I can beat it one of these days. I would just love to get back to, um, my uh, feeling of normal. I just, you know, I'm not normal. <laughs> uh, and as that might sound and it's it is it's very um it takes over your life you don't have control of your life it does and that's just a it's a horrible place to be it's really not a place you want to be at so um i hope that this either gave you some hope or um at least some comfort to know that somebody's out there that understands and um have a great day Bye-bye.